Welcome in. It's the Positively Petland Show, 800 KXIC, Iowa City. I'm Jay Capron, Ron Salzer here with Petland of Iowa City. And I hope you're doing well. We've got lots to tell you about. We're going to tell you about the corgi, a specific type of corgi, from what I understand. We're going to talk about secrets of urine. <laughs> <laughs> You like no, we're not. You like that delivery. <laughs> you, and then you combine two. Yes. And then we're also going to talk about Go, which is a dog food. It's a real short name, but uh, not short on quality from what I hear. It's good stuff. So we'll talk about that with Ron Salzer. How are things going, Ron? As always, fun. Come in and play. It's, Come play with the pups. It's crazy in that store. And I know people get frustrated sometimes. <laughs> we, we're all about fun in there. And uh, you can tell that those workers are, are, uh, humping it pretty good in there as far as getting around and all that. But um, I, I am up to 33 employees in that store and we're still like, it seems like we're just not cutting it as far as having people out there helping you. So we're always trying and getting them uh, trained and going. So we good appreciate deal. your patience. Well, we're going to do our amazing pet story. I, I know we're, we want to do that. Uh, we're going to be sure to I have some fun, as we always do, and we always encourage you that if you ever have a question, to be sure to get a hold of us here. You can always do that. Contact me. Send it to news at kxic.com, news at kxic.com, or you can just contact us by going to the pet store, talk to Ron, uh, any of the counselors, tell them you want to be, a, you have a radio question, and they'll get it, they'll get you in touch, and, and you can get that question answered that way, or just go to the store and get your question answered that way, because there's lots of people that are able to help out at the store that are trained to help you, and if it's, again, if it's not uh, something that you're used to knowing, I mean, not everyone knows these questions, a lot of these are common questions that Ron gets them a hundred times, but you might not know the answer to it. So get the right answers from Petland of Iowa City. They'll be happy to help you out. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bring in our, oh, okay, can we possibly do this one today? The, uh, I, I don't think we can do that one. I'm going to have to skip one. I, I'm putting in an executive authority today. There was one about a hummingbird, and I decided that uh, that's not really a pet. And I don't want to give the wrong idea that that could be a pet, right? Because you don't want to take a hummingbird into no, but those are awesome, they are like amazing. wild pets that you leave alone. You know, you just put those little feeders out there. I love going to my parents' I, house. They've oh, yeah. really done it up. Yeah. And there's times when you bring them out and times when you're supposed to take them back The way out. they move around, though, they yeah. just dart. You know, it almost looks like they're standing still and they're just kind of moving. You know, they just like. Choo, choo, choo. Yeah. And it's just amazing what those do. Cool. I love them. So we're not going with the hummingbird. But we are going to tell you about a dog that saved a two-day-old kitten. Oh. It's time for the amazing. He's flapping his wings as fast as he can. Big voice guy, you're not a hummingbird. <laughs> you're wiggling a lot too. Yeah, everything was a, wiggling. Not a very good look. Big voice guy, come on now. All right, thank you very much. All right, today's story is a tiny two-day-old kitten that was found by, found by a puppy in the field behind an apartment, and now these two are best friends. This is still one of those stories that it's just like, come on, how cute can it be? You have Roscoe and Opie, these two little ones that are friends. And what happened was um, Rosco, uh, the the puppy was Opie. And what happened was uh, he's fought, you know, he's doing what puppies do. And Ron, you know what that is. They frolic, right? They hop around. They jump around. He's in the picture of puppy in a field. He's oh, yeah, yeah. frolicking, having a good time. All of a sudden, er, a little turn of the head. And there's this little furry thing down there, and it's <laughs> Roscoe, a kitten. So now he goes, what is that? So then the family takes him in, and what do you know? Best friends in the picture of Roscoe and, and Opie does it all because you can see that they're hanging out together. And, you know, a little kitten out on his own, that's uh, not a good thing there. So it's nice to hear that they the dog saved uh, up. Opie saved his buddy Roscoe. That's your amazing pet story of the week. So when we come back, we're going to talk more about the topics at hand. We mentioned what we're going to talk about. There's a corgi. We'll tell you what kind of corgi. And we'll also tell you about secrets of pet stains. Am I right on that? Mm hmm. Okay. Close enough. Well, you could do secrets on the pet stains, but it was secrets of fish keeping. Oh, yeah. So I was. But the, on that. the on the how to get those spots out and get your dog or cat from stop going there. That's key. Okay. And that's what we're going to cover is those details of what you're supposed to do about Good. that. All right. That'll be helpful. And we'll talk about that. And then we will talk about a dog food call. Go. Ready? We got to go. We'll be right back. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Welcome back. It's the Positively Petland Show, 800 KXIC, Iowa City. I'm Jay Capron, having some fun with the Positively Petland Show, as always. It's always a good time to laugh and talk about our furry friends. We love our animals, don't we? My, uh, we were, we were just, uh, we just were actually having a, a funny moment because, all right. I, I don't want to make us sound like bad parents, but I, I might end up doing this. Is that Jack was downstairs and he had scissors? That's that's <laughs> not a good thing. Right? They were the child scissors, but he was working on an art project, so I don't know. We trust him. He's only he's seven years old. He's not a baby baby. So uh, this was a while back, and then all of a sudden, Lucy comes upstairs, and there's a chunk of her hair missing. And um, oh, yeah. yeah. And wait, how's that a bad parent? That happens with uh, everyone. I know, but I, I'm just saying downstairs with scissors by himself is not the best idea. But, uh, you know, anyway. <laughs> kids will be kids. Yeah, kids will be kids. And they were the safety scissors. But anyway, he comes upstairs and there's a chunk of hair missing from the cat. So the best part is the reaction, though. He claims that he oh, didn't do it. Oh, I love these. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm saying, oh, really? And so, of course, we, oh, really? you didn't do it. So how did it happen? I don't know. Oh, no. Well, why are the scissors? And then he eventually did cop to it. But what's funny is we just, this was like months ago. And we realized, well, I was just looking at her the other day and I was petting her. I'm like, you know what? That still has not grown all the way back. Like you could still tell where that chunk is at from there. You could just tell it's a little, it's a little bit different looking. So. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Emily, our daughter, you know, they, uh, everybody has those stories. And she did that where she cut her hair in her room, just a little swath. Her right own on, hair? Yeah, yeah, right on the yeah. forehead. And, came walking out you know hey how's it going you know kind of a thing and she probably knew it was a little different now and she's like oh shoot how am i gonna hide this one <laughs> she denied it for i think it was weeks uh moms man you know that you got you don't miss a thing oh yeah emptying the trash found this little swath of Ooh, hair so said, what's what, this about? yeah what's this about oh she broke down and cried and i'm so sorry i lied and and you know, then but that's the teachable moment. Mm. You know, it's okay. Look at what happened. Not much. You know, it's okay to let us know when things are happening. So it was a good teachable moment to mm. be honest with the parents. Yeah, but for those types of fun stories, you know, that's what it's life, right? And we always have fun. And these are our, our family members, right? The, the 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 pets that we have in our family. So let's talk about uh, corgis. If you want to bring a corgi into your family, do you have one right now? At least at the time of recording. Yes, and what uh, they're of, going fast. What type of corgi is it? <clears throat> Had to get all set. The Pembroke Welsh corgi. So they're from Wales. Yeah, but let's go back further. I can't go any further. Than yeah, that. it goes back further than that. Where? So where did the Pembroke Welsh corgi come from? Uh, as far as before Pembroke. the the Pembrokes, the Pembroke family took Wales. Over. I would say yeah, England. No, no, mm, this is right fun. Next door. Vikings. In really? Early Scandinavia. Scandinavia. Yeah. Wow, how about that? I would never guess that. That's cool. So they were the ones that brought them into that area. Um, direct ancestors of the Pembrokeshire breed are known to have accompanied the Flemish weavers. So this is a little late, while later. The Flemish weavers who settled in southwestern Wales in A.D. <laughs> 1107. I couldn't get the the number out. I don't know why that was. Some other areas that they were, you know, brought up. I love these names. C Cardiganshire. I wonder what came out. Of, what else? A, an article of clothing came out of that area. Cardiganshire to the north uh, worked on the, the Pembroke Corgi. And then obviously uh, the Pembroke Shire area did some work on developing the Pembroke Welsh corgi so a really cool past as far as where it goes noble dog you know queen elizabeth ii had one um hmm. and they still are kind of you know when whenever you see somebody with one you kind of a little higher end you know kind of dog yeah. kind of a thing so this is what's interesting is the akc says with their normal sized body i actually would disagree with that the corgis are known for a little longer body um and so i'm not sure where they're saying that hmm. Okay, but I think they, I, I follow it in this way. Short, sturdy legs, the corgi is classed as a dwarf. Really? And so, so it's the normal, the body is what's normal. Interesting. But the legs are dwarf. Uh, I was talking with Dr. Ebert from Gentle Heart Pet Clinic about this uh, one day, and I was astonished that she goes, oh, yeah, there's like a hundred different uh, dwarf breeds mm -hmm. and 
midgets. That's a different category. And I, to this day, am still like, I don't get it, the differences and all that kind of stuff yeah, and how to that's know interesting. all that. But the Pembroke Corgi is in the dwarf classification because of those shorter legs. Hmm. So I guess that's when the body itself is fine, but then the uh, standard or whatever, and then the legs itself is just... I always think of short legs when I think of corgis. I always, yeah, they just have that. It almost looks like they should be taller, right? And that's right? yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. there, there. That's you know, intuitively, you're you're talking about it as far as that goes. So, uh, when the small Welsh cattle are grazed in common unfenced unfenced pastures, the nimble corgi herded them to the choicest spots and chased away competition. Hmm. You know, that's uh, just a little bit about you know what were they developed for and all that. Um, some other things that, you know about the corgi it is a shedding breed it is a double coat uh so if you're sensitive to those kind of things this would not be the breed for you they are a sm- you know small to medium sized dog so while they do shed it's not going to be like a lab or a golden it's going to be less than that but you will notice that shed around the house and of course if that is concerning to you and you are just set on getting a pembroke walsh corgi then get the ferminator and help uh remove 90 over 90 percent of the shed just with that uh, comb it's worth the money yes you will get sticker shock when you see the prices of the uh, ferminator but the thing just works it's also uh at our store it's money back guarantees so if you don't like it then oh, that's good yeah too. just bring it back in and i think in 10 years i think we've had two of them returned sold thousands you know kind of mm. things so it's that good of a a product um so the pembroke Corgi is going to have some energy as a result because of the herding aspects of it. So if you're looking for that lazy small dog, eh, the Pembroke's going to have some energy in there for you and run, want to run around and all that kind of a thing. Um, but if you're like me, I stand in the yard with my dogs and I, I just go, go. Oh, it's kind of like the dog food we're going to talk about. And they run around and all that kind of stuff. And, and you can get the energy out of a Pembroke just by, you know, backyard play and all that. You don't have to go any long runs or anything like that. So cool. that is the, Pembroke Welsh Corgi and we right now uh, on what is it Thursday of this week we do have that I uh, today now when this is broadcasting Sunday I'm not sure if it's still being there but we'll have some more in the future if you're ever interested in any breed and we don't have it in right now just get put on our uh, breed request and we'll call you when it comes in so that you can come in and and check them out and, and all that kind of stuff. It's just a friendly call to come on in and we've got it in here. Check them out. Kind of cool. Thing. Good deal. So that's the Corgi and that's our breed of the week, which is always fun. It's a great way to start the show to learn about a new breed. And uh, I think those loyal listeners of the show have learned a lot about different mm-hmm. breeds over the years because uh, it's fun. Like even last last week was a great example of that, a Bouvier de Flandres. I never heard of it in my whole life. So I think I learned something last week. And uh, I've heard of corgis, but this particular corgi, I just learned a little bit about uh, uh, those too. So that's what's fun. A little education uh, involved with this and then a lot of fun too. We always like to get some good information out there, have a laugh or two along the way with this show. And if you ever have questions, be sure to stop by Petland of Iowa City. So we move on to the next topic at hand, which would be, uh, you want to go you, probably with the odor remover yeah. before. Yeah, does your dog... Mark, so a real brief review, if all dogs are marking dogs, all cats are marking cats. Every time they pee, that is a mark, and that's just what they do. So some people think, oh, this one is more marking than the other. Um, it, they all do it every single time they pee. Um, yeah, sure, some of them, we had a Shih Tzu over at our house that like peed every 10 seconds, and so we had to contain that dog because obviously it had learned. It was just over as a guest for a little while. Um, and we had to contain the Shih Tzu as a result because he was peeing in various places throughout. But we had to clean every one of those areas up because now that's a permission for other dogs as well to pee. Mm-hmm. Just use the look at the fire hydrant. You know, all dogs, they got to pee there. So that's the tendency that we're, you know, we get frustrated with. But understand really the roots of the problem, and then you'll start discovering the solutions. And so the basic solution is, is using a stain and odor remover with an enzyme. That enzyme is the key thing for removing that permission to P smell. So we usually we talk about this uh, quite frequently because it is one of the most frequent questions that we hear from our customers. Um, that product, and, and there's a lot of different versions of it out there, has been out for over 40 years. So it's nothing new. This thing is proven. It works, but it's 
applying it is what most people have the issue that the people that find out about it and they do have some like, Hey, it didn't work. It's applying it. Then that makes the, the difference. So I'm going to take what three different scenarios on a flat surface, kind of like a concrete or tile floor. We're going to talk about carpeting. How would we, what would we do different uh, using this product in the carpeting area and then a uh, couch and beds uh, kind of area, even the dog bed, how would you handle those situations? Hmm. So the first one is fairly simple. And it's, you know, flat surfaces. Um, you can use, some of them have spray nozzles on the top. And I go, man, it's the worst thing they ever did was put a spray nozzle on it. Because you have to use so much more than what that spray is going to deliver, except for a flat surface. A flat surface doesn't need that much. What What is required in the big picture with the stain and odor re remover with an enzyme in it that takes away that permission to pee that the dog or cat laid down is you have to use the same quantity at the, as they urinated. On a flat surface though, all you need to do is wet that surface enough so that the water penetrates as far as the urine uh, penetrated. It has to come in contact with all aspects of where that urine went. If you miss a spot, they're gonna come back and still smell that area and then do it again, re <laughs> reseed it. Uh, so you got to get it all. If you do this and you follow the directions and your dog or cat still comes back and still does it, all it's telling you is you didn't get it all. Use more of the product. They smell better than we do, right? Yeah, <laughs> they will after you do this. No, I mean, they, they can, their sense of smell. Is oh, better. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, they smell very accurately. I equate it. It's not a, a, it, the, an exact analogy, but like we see, um, you know, I, you know, when you're looking out at your yard, you see trees, grass, fences, people walking, you know, birds, all this, all this stuff going on. They smell at that accuracy. And so they can go way beyond what we what we can even comprehend as far as scent goes. So on that flat surface, you can use a spray or just glug glug it out there and get it that whole area that they urinated on, get that whole area covered with that liquid. So the spray will work on a flat surface. And all I do is let it sit for 20 minutes. And the reason why 20 minutes or more is critical is, is that it's seeping in to those nooks and crannies. Uh, your tile floor has nooks and crannies in it. That wooden floor definitely has nooks and crannies in it. And then you're trying to get it into that area that the urine also went into. So it comes in contact with it, eliminates that odor that gives them the permission to pee again. And now you've solved the first problem in potty training. Number one problem in potty training, it is get that scent out. So that's a flat surface. Now let's move to carpet. This is where, th take away that, take the spray nozzle thing off and glug glug it onto that area. The reason is, is you really now have to use the same amount, if not more than they urinated, because that has to get through the top carpeting, into the padding, into the subsurface, whether that is wood or concrete or whatever the base is, and then penetrate into that. So you need quantity now to do that. So now it's glug glug the whole area and I'll even with a towel or a washcloth kind of mush it around so that it gets in contact with everything and it gets all the way down to the bottom and everything. I'm not trying to get it up at this point. I'm just trying to move it so that it really goes deep into it. Now, uh, in 20 minutes or so, you know, you now let it just sit and let it really seep in and work and all that kind of stuff. Now you can get a nice big towel and blot it up and get most of that moisture up. That's a nice way of getting those spots. If you have a bigger issue where it's throughout that whole room and the carpeting is ruined, yeah, sometimes you gotta just pull up the carpeting and start anew. But before I would put any carpeting back down, I would spray or uh, clean with a, a damp mop of the stain and odor remover with an enzyme in it, that whole area so that you get that smell away all the way down at that level because if you put new carpeting over it i think you're going to mask a lot of the smell but your dog still has a chance or that cat still has a chance of smelling it all the way down into that subsurface that the carpeting is laying on so get it all the way down there blot it back up um, if you are going to do more of a room hey my dog has uh you know not just one spot that it always goes on uh it, it goes on like five different spots and it's getting even worse well treat those spots that you are aware of 
and then come back and use a carpet cleaner, the ones that you're going to rent over at the hardware store, but use, instead of using uh, the detergents that they you know, usually have on there, use a stain and odor remover with an enzyme in it. And you can get this stuff in gallon jugs. I was just thinking last night, I wonder if I can get it in my store in five gallon buckets because <laughs> there's people with that level of problem and you know i don't think a lot of people want it in that quantity but when you got the problem you got the problem and you're going to go through a lot of it um, but you can buy it in gallon jugs and you just pour it into neat into the uh, rug cleaner and now you're gonna the rug cleaner is going to spray the whole area and then it's going to suck it back up and all that i would even recommend spray the area get it all nice and damp again let it sit for a while 20 minutes and then come back and just use that suction aspect of the carpet cleaner and get it all up that would be more for uh, a whole carpet a whole room cleaning so you're going to treat those spots really really well and then come back with a carpet cleaner if this is a widespread issue you get it quick enough you're only going to have one spot in our house hey with you know really good technique on potty training we had one or two areas that we had to uh, clean up as a result uh, you're also going to reinvent the wheel here if your cat or dog has some uh, surgery a little groggy from the anesthesia um, we had a cat that uh, was just a little goofy for a while and urinated in a storage room of all places. Like we opened the door and he batted right in or beat it right in or whatever and peed right there in front of you. And you're like, what are you doing, Gilbert? You know, he's never done anything like that. Never has done anything since. But once he laid down that spot, every time we opened that door, he ran in there and did it again. But then we used that stain and odor remover and this was a carpeted area and so i had to use a lot of it next time uh, gilbert ran in there he was literally looked confused as much as a cat can look confused <laughs> uh didn't know where the spot went he was sniffing all over the place and eventually just walked away and said oh well i guess i can't do it and that was success you know that's when you get that and you go cool now let's move on to the thicker stuff um, for couches and bed, your own bed, you're going to treat that. Uh, beds are really difficult because most of that bed is hollow. And when urine went through it, it went through your top padding, probably dribbled along the springs and stuff and down into the bottom. You're going to just do your best uh, it, it, as far as this goes. And you got to do the glug glug and all that. But somehow, somehow now you got to let this hall air out too and, and dry. Well, they urinated and it dried. Now you can come back and do that. Again, if they urinate in that same spot again, that's a difficult one on those beds because now you got to do it again. You got to use a little bit more. So beds are tough. Couches, because there's not that hollow area usually, you know, you're going to treat that area just like you did the rug. Remember though, that big cushion is a sponge. And so it pulled that urine in and and now you got to get this stain and odor remover with an enzyme have you heard that enough yet <laughs> uh all the way through it so that's the couches and beds uh the pet bed um even if they're not urinating in that do you got do you have one of those beds that it just smells like a dog <laughs> and you like i throw it in the washing machine but it still smells like a dog what I want you to do for that is, is take those dog and cat beds, put it in the washer, put your normal detergent in the dispenser, but in the, uh, oh, is it the bleach cup or the softener cup? I want you to put a quarter to half a cup of stain and odor remover with an enzyme in it, uh, in that cup. So let the detergent get most of the oils out from your dogs and cats, and then let the stain and odor remover get right to the source of the smell uh, that's in there it not only would remove urine smells so if your dog or cat is urinating over and over again in a bed this is your first step in solving that problem and so you're going to use it for that purpose but those dog smells and and well cats don't have most cats don't have smells but if you got that pet smell that you're trying to get rid of this will do a really good job of getting rid of that. Um, if you haven't washed the bed in a while, you might need to go through two cycles, you know, to, to get it all done. Um, but it, if you keep on doing it, we wash the beds once a week in our house and they smell really good. So that's how you use the stain and odor remover in those three situations uh, and to help you go on to good potty training and control and eliminating that permission to 
pee within your house. Keep it out at the fire hydrant, not in your house. And those are based off of questions that have come into Petland of Iowa City too, which I think is great. You know, helping to bring you know questions that you hear and other questions that listeners may have, and uh, some specifics. That's good. I, I know we've touched on the standing order remover in the past, but to actually give it specifics to, to where to use it. I, I like that. That was good. Yeah, good, I had good, two good customers point. this week come in with that kind mm -hmm. of, I know about this product, and so we had to go into specifics on how to use it good. correctly. All right, so what about the secrets of fish The keeping? secrets. Are you one of those people that have problems with keeping fish, but I love fish, and maybe you had a good experience when you were a kid, and you're like, I can't duplicate that thing now. <laughs> so I wanted to have a fish tip every week just to, to keep, pull you along on this because I love fish. Uh, they are just so relaxing uh, to sit there and watch, but only when the tank looks really good, you know, when it's not looking good or things are bad or happening, then it's to put, you know, oh, I don't like this or your child, you know, all you got to do is have that first fish in their life pass away. And man, that's a bad day at school. I, that was in our house. So how can we uh, do our best, you know, that's the best we can do, do our best to prevent that situation. And so we can talk about the two secrets of fish keepers, people that do this all the time. Um, there's a lot of things that they do, uh, uh, but the two main ones that prevent the, the uh, passing away of that fish so suddenly and so quickly, right when you brought them home. The first thing is, is using a dechlorinator, often called on the bottle a conditioner. And so this product, you know, coming out of our faucets, uh, there is chlorine in the water, and that's to protect us from bacteria and all that. Um, and there is quite frequently enough chlorine in there to kill the fish that we're bringing home. And so we have to remove that chlorine from there. The conditioner also has some enhancers for the fish to put a slime layer down or maintain that slime layer that is what the fish uses to stay healthy. So it has two approaches. So even if you're like, I don't know if I've got chlorine in there or I buy my water from the you know grocery store or whatever, um, and I'm not sure, I wouldn't even risk it. It's the product is so cheap and you use so little of it, just get it and do it. At, at a minimum, you're just helping the slime layer of your fish. Whenever you add water from the first water you add to topping off the tank because of evaporation or when you're doing your water changes, um, you got to use the conditioner. That's the first step in preventing that fish from passing away. Um, uh, I uh, was a long time ago, I learned the lesson of I was bulk filling the tank. I had a hose, man, because I, I, there was so many gallons I had to put in it. And I just was dripping the conditioner in while the hose was running. That's not good enough. You just got to do it bucket by bucket and treat the bucket. It works instantaneously. And now you can pour it in. But you can't have the hose going into the tank while there's fish in there and think you're going to treat it all effectively that way. So a little technique there. Second thing, a uh, reason why fish pass away right at that beginning is the what's called the nitrogen cycle. And it's just a cycle where bacteria are getting in, in creating a balance within your tank. And one it, along the way, ammonia is produced because uh, urine is a derivative of ammonia. And so as it's breaking down, ammonia then gets produced. And ammonia is lethal not only to fish, but it's lethal to us as well. And so you need to eliminate the ammonia in your tank safely so you, don't also, you know, also don't kill the fish when you're eliminating it. The way to do that is a product called Cycle. Oh, I wonder why they, where they got that name. During the cycle, ammonia is produced. They call the product that helps you through the cycle called Cycle. And there's other products out there that do the same thing. These are bacteria in a bottle that break apart ammonia. And so the what I do in my tank is is a, definitely if I'm right when I started the tank, I used Cycle that puts the bacteria that I need in there right away. I, I right away can put fish in there. It eliminates uh, or it reduces significantly the amount of ammonia as this is a 14 day cycle that the bacteria go through. And it eliminates a really those high spikes of ammonia because the bacteria eat it and deal with it. Uh, so make sure you use cycle not only at the beginning, but 
all every week you're going to put it in there because your tank is always changing. You're either doing a water change, you're putting more fish in, um, you're putting plants in, you're doing a little gravel cleaning, you're doing a little scraping on the windows. All of that forces your your tank to go through another cycle to heat, meet equilibrium. And so cycle will help you not only at the beginning, but all the way through the process by adding beneficial bacteria that keep those ammonia spikes down to a minimum. So those are the two se secrets. Condition your water every time you add it, and then keep on using a product called Cycle uh, to eliminate that ammonia. So those are my two Good secrets deal. of the week. And we are uh, almost out of time. So, so we got to go. Yeah, but let's, let's go. So How do we I, go? Let's I, go. I like the way uh, Go is a product that's been out for a while. And we've been, Coy and I have been watching it. And he brought it in. He goes, I'm all about it now. And I just want to read, you know, this is how they market it on their website. And it does a nice job. Uh, got a pet that's picky eater? Get Go. Has dandruff or dull coat? Go get Go. Food allergies or sensitivities? Go. Fee feeding your dog or cat the right premium quality food can be the solution to many of these issues. Go recipes were created especially for pets who are fussy about their food, who need a grain-free or high-protein diet, and for those requiring a recipe that's unique in proteins or a limited number of ingredients. So these are dogs with some issues, but man, if you don't have any of these issues, this product is really good for them as well. Um, it, it is designed for that fit and free type dog. So is your dog having, uh, is an energetic dog? This is going to be a really good product because it's going to have those protein rich uh, and, and good carbs in there to keep things going in the right uh, direction. Um, for sensitive stomachs uh, and having a shinier coat, there's going to be re really good ingredients in there to get those going. Way above average as far as uh, if you're going to grocery marts or grocery stores, uh, this product is way above average beyond those, and you're going to see the difference um, in all that. And then they have you know the probiotics and all that kind of stuff, and so the daily defense uh, for your dog just to keep them healthier and all that. Uh, Go is a complete nutrition-packed food with zero growth hormones, zero pie products, or and zero artificial preservatives. Hmm. So it's a good product all around. I uh, went to a dog advisor. Uh, they liked that they rated it a four out of a five. They called it highly recommended for your dog. And so uh, they had, you know, a lot of nice glowing things to say about it. Uh, I was talking with a dog food manufacturer this week about dog food advisor and Dog food, uh, dog food manufacturers really pay attention to that site. So if you're ever looking at, you know, how good is my food? If you want to like look at Beneful, you know, that's one of those popular ones that you get at the grocery market. Go to Dog Food Advisor, look it up, and you will be shocked on what you're going to learn about Beneful. And you're going to want to go to go. <laughs> you're going to go to something else. So if you ever have any questions on that. And but there's you want... vegetables on the outside pack. Yeah, it looks so good. My dog loves it. <laughs> But there's a lot better you can do for your dog, and you will see the difference, and you typically won't have to pay anything more. That's because you feed less, right? Yeah. I'll and then they poop that. less, too, which is good. All right, Brahma, we're out of time, if you can believe it. Fun show, as always, and we appreciate it. We'll talk to you next time, okay? Thanks. That's Ron Salzer with Petland of Iowa City. Check gotta him go. out. Lower Muscatine. we got to go. Yeah, we got to go. Go to Petland of Iowa City. Buy 10, get one free on their cat and dog foods, including... Go, go, yes. And also want to let you know they have $5 nail trims. Just don't forget to bring that distemper and uh, rabies stuff, right? Yep. All right. Well, we're out of time. Got to go. Bye. <laughs>